Life by Divine with Sue DeMay fosters deep healing and profound awakenings as she guides you to hear, answer, and trust the highest calling of your heart. Your host and sacred guide is global impact visionary leader Sue DeMay, a best-selling author, international speaker, and gifted intuitive healer who challenges all of us to shift from life by default or even life by design to truly living life by divine. And now, here is Sue DeMay. Welcome. I'm excited to be here today and to share a little bit of my gift with you. Today, I'm going to be offering some free intuitive readings and answering any questions you have. If you have a question about your health, if you have a question about some of the content I share, some of the ideas and visions I have, if you have a question about what's happening in the world today and how to navigate that, I'm open to any and all of your, your needs. So I'm here to, to be of service to you today in whatever way I can. As we embark on this journey together, I want to invite you to recognize that in every episode, whether I'm doing readings or just sharing a channeled message, there is often a gift somewhere in it for you. So whether you get to talk to me live today or you end up having the experience of listening to me working with other people, I want you to recognize that there is a gem in there for you. And as I'm working with others energetically, I'm also working with you. I'm, I'm working with everybody who's listening live, but I'm also working with everybody who will be listening to the replay which is live at the time that you're listening. It's live for you in the experience. So it's evergreen. The energy I work with is always available. And when you listen one time or listen 10 times, that energy is there for you. And it will actually serve you at the level and the depth that you need when you're listening each time. And it can be different and it can shift and it can actually allow you to go deeper and deeper with certain episodes, particularly with certain episodes that you're really guided to, to embrace and listen to more than once. So today, as we go into the intuitive readings, I'm going to invite you to be wide open to receive. I'm already working with all the energy right now. I've got a beautiful, but there's a three elements of energy that I work with. Well, three dynamics of energy that I work with. One is um, mother earth. So my, um, I, I work with the, the earth energy and the elements, the wind, fire, light, and earth and water. I work with that energy a lot. And then I work with what I call a divinity vortex. And that's a combination of the energies that I play with down in Turks and Caicos. I'm now back in Canada. So I bring that energy with me and I work with that energy as well. So energy vortexes. There's lots of energy vortexes around the world. You can find sp spots, sacred spots all around the world. Like Machu Picchu has an energy vortex, although the energy moves differently in Machu Picchu compared to in Turks and Caicos. Turks and Caicos, it's more of a vortex spiraling energy and Machu Picchu is more of a, a rising energy and then it spirals up. So it was very interesting to play with those different energies. And then I bring in um, divine consciousness or God consciousness, that level of vibration as well. So I work with a lot of different energies and you can kind of look at the radio show episodes or my blogs or my books or whatever you end up being drawn to in the way of the work with me as they're like pyramids or crystals or they're, they're tuning forks. So because I'm vibrationally attuned to a certain level of frequency, just listening to my voice, just being in my presence, whether that's live or listening to a replay, whether that's in person or, or by distance, there is no geographical boundaries in the work I'm doing. There is no limits to the energy I work with. And each time I raise my vibrational frequency, I... I have, there's an invitation for everyone else to come along. So in the last 
three to four weeks being in Turks and Caicos, I was there for two months, but in the last three to four weeks and really working with the ego game of opposites and shifting a lot of that subconscious programming that I didn't know, like that virus that was playing in the back of my mind, so much has shifted. And it's been really interesting coming back to Canada now, being back here with my family, being back here on the farm and being with all our animals. And my animals are actually responding to me differently. They were always connected to me and I always felt a heart connection to my animals and, but, but this time feels different. They're, they're, they're acting differently (laughs) in a good way, but I'm just very aware that they're, they're different and I've gone for lengths of time before. So this is definitely fresh and new. And I believe that as I've shifted these deeper self-sabotaging viral programming in the subconscious mind, those pieces that the ego has been holding without my awareness, my frequency is rising. And, and it's interesting too, because all these little subtle things that used to be left over for me or have all fall away, dissolved, and instantly are just gone from doing this work. So it's a really powerful tool. I'm really excited about it to be sharing it with you, but also to be working at this level now, uh, a new level of vibrational frequency since I've come back. I really feel a shift that has happened for me personally, which then influences the work I do with you and with everyone else. If you're interested in the masterclass, I do have a date. It's on Sunday, this coming Sunday, the 14th from 10 to 12 Pacific time. And you can sign up um, to my newsletter. I haven't released the, the actual sign up link yet but you can join me on Heart Yes Movement Group and you'll receive the link there or you can sign up for my newsletter and get the link. I'll be sharing that within the next couple of days. I just need to do a video for the landing page and that's coming in the next day or two. But for now, mark the calendar for Sunday, April 14th uh, from 10 to 12 noon Pacific time. If you don't make the live Masterclass, that's okay. It'll be, re- it'll be available as a replay and I'll send you the link directly afterwards. If you do sign up, you'll get the replay. So I do encourage you to join me for that. The, basically, we're looking at the hidden ego game of opposites revealing the ego mind virus, that ego mind hack in the back of the subconscious mind hidden deep into the recesses of your mind that is responsible for all self-sabotaging behaviors and all super stuck patterns. And I've been working one-on-one with people. I've had one client, I did a session around emotional eating that was on a Friday and instantly it all dissipated. She hasn't done any emotional eating now since that. And it's been at least three weeks. There's another who had a big shift around anger and resentment that's totally dissipated For myself, there's been a lot of shifts around family. I've talked to and shared about that last week and the week before. I keep going. I just, I I think I'm going to have this big, massive ego dictionary of definitions that are all being deleted and a new spirit driven, divine driven definition for, for these beautiful terms in life that will actually honor and allow us all to move forward. So part of what we're really doing with the ego game of opposites is blasting, dissolving, clearing, quarantining, deleting all of the old programming. And it's not just your own programming. This is like collective conscious fear-based programming. And what I'm noticing, the more I do it, the more I'm seeing the truth and the more I'm seeing how it's actually really embedded and, and influencing so many people's behaviors and beliefs and experiences these days and, and keeping people really playing small. And I think that's part of, part of the, the challenges everybody's feeling, such a calling to play big and yet feeling like there's something stopping them. And this is what's stopping you. And I want to help you do that. So I look forward to seeing you at the masterclass for the Hidden Ego Game of Opposites on Sunday. It's free to sign up. Anybody can join. Anybody can listen to the replay. And it will be a, an experience that empowers you to be able to do this on your own. I don't want you to, to, to rely on me to do it for you. 
I want to give you the step-by-step -step and the worksheet and everything you need so that you can do this and continue to do this on your own. If you need support, of course, there's, there's ways that I can support you. However, I really want to get this information out there. It's essential. It's, it's a life changer. It's a game changer for people. And it's really, really important to have people aware of what's really going on in the recesses in the back kind of background of their mind. Anytime you have a desire in your conscious mind and that programming is not in alignment with it, you will always manifest what's programmed in the subconscious mind. So if it conflicts, it will basically void out what you really want and you'll end up having an experience of what you don't want. So let's take a look today and see where we can go. So if you have a question about your health, a question about you want to tune into a loved one who's passed or to connect with an animal who's passed or anything, I'm open to any experiences. If there's some blocks or energies that you need to move or you want some support around, feel free to, to call in. The number to call in is one 844 390 that's one 390 8255 And I'll be taking some callers here in just a few moments. So as you are getting ready to call in and join me and ask a question or to receive a healing or have an intuitive reading, I will just pause for a moment and just work with everybody's energy who's showing up and who will be showing up for this experience in the future, in the future moments that arrive. Again, that number is 1-844-390-8255 to call in for a live intuitive reading today. When I've, when I used to tune into working with my gift, it, it was interesting. So I, I was watching something over the weekend and I was recognizing that someone who is very sensitive, has an intuitive gift and how challenging it was for them to be in an environment where they would get constant messages. And it was overwhelming messages. It was messages that they just couldn't mm, turn off or, or it was kind of bombarded. And I remember when I was younger, I used to be bombarded a lot by people's pain, people's emotions, people's trauma, leftovers, not only their physical pain, their emotional pain, their their thoughts, their beliefs, I would just get so much information. It would be overwhelming. It would be really hard for me to be in a room with anyone. And I found that over the years, I found a way to actually allow my gift to be not really tuned, turned off, although I, I do call it a little bit of a turning off. It's my, it's what I call minding my own business. So that when I'm in a group or in a big space, especially in a big, a, a big group of people, like a big audience or a lot of people, if I'm not actually on stage or doing the work, then there's a turning off of my gift in a way or minding my own business. So there's no energetic or spiritual eavesdropping happening. I'm not getting messages coming at me in all directions like thorns. And because it, it gets very confusing. So if you're a light worker and you have a gift and you find that you have that gift kind of coming in a lot, just know that it's there is a way to actually take care of yourself in that so that you're not bombarded with those messages all the time. It's essential because otherwise, how can we be in the world? So that's part of what I talk about in my book is like embracing our humanness and embodying our divinity. There's a way to actually do both and not feel so vulnerable and weak and susceptible as a human being having this experience, especially when you're so beautifully sensitive to the people around us and the energy around us. So I know for me with animals, with nature, even with mother earth, I can really feel when there's energy discharging. And a lot of times right now there's energy that discharges at this level of like a global scale. And a lot of times it needs an outlet. And what'll happen when this collective energy rises is that it'll find an outlet in a light worker, a light leader. 
when that happens, we end up having to help others and support others through that. Hi, do we have a caller here? Hi, Rada. Yes. How are you? Yes. Hi. Hi, I'm okay. How are you? I'm good. Good to hear your voice. Thanks. Yeah, you too. <laughs> How can I support you? Um, I had two things I was wondering if you could um, help with. Um, one is I've been experiencing um, a lot of back pain. Um, so if there's anything that you can um, either suggest or help with healing around that, that would be really great. Um, and the other thing is around my marriage. So I don't know which one would be good to start with first, but... Well, interestingly, they up. feel related. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So let me let me go to the back pain because I'm being called there first, but it, I want you to be open because I feel like they're related. Okay. So okay. we might get them for both. So I'm just getting a lot of tingling in the body. So let me just move through your energy field here because there's just a lot wanting to clear. Just um, it, There's just energy like whoo, whoo, clearing just for no reason. It's just old stuff that needs to go. So let me just cl clear the clutter first, I guess. You okay. <laughs> All right. So you're just breathe, be open. You can even close your eyes and tune in. I'm really drawn to your low back. Is that the area that you're getting the pain? Yes, it is. Okay. I'm more drawn to the right side than the left. I'm just going to go to the right side and see. Okay. Uh, the image I'm getting on the right side, it's like there's like kind of a black hole, like a void. Hmm. Okay. I'm just going to follow it down with your permission. I'm just going to go a little deeper. Sure. So I'm, bis I'm being drawn into I'm almost like a path. It's kind of like a tunnel, like a cave in a tunnel. I feel like I'm underground uh, mm. following it down. And so there's a lot of roots around. There's, there's kind of dampness, water around me dripping through the soil and stuff so it's it's quite damp and cold and dark hmm. i'm just going to hmm. keep following it all the way if we can get to the root here so i'm getting interesting i got a mother figure first but i'm being drawn to the father figure so i'm just being pointed over there your relationship with your father, how is? Uh, well, he passed away a long time ago, but it was a very um, difficult, not healthy relationship. Do you feel at peace or complete since he's passed? Have you found a way to kind of make peace with how the relationship was, or does it feel still? Uh, um, I think I've found a lot of peace around it. Um, it's obviously, I mean, to me, it feels like it's, must be still impacting me because uh, I feel like as much as I try to avoid it, I ended up marrying a version of him. <laughs> so um, that's definitely still impacting me in that way. Okay. I'm just going to tune in and see if there's a message from him first because he feels very like strong. He's coming in really strong. Okay. He's pointing to your left shoulder. He's right now he's standing in front to your left and he's pointing to your left shoulder. So it's just an indication he wants to take a position as a guardian angel for you. And my sense is uh, when he's wanting to do that, he's pointing to your relationship. It, it it can be your relationship with your marriage, whether your marriage continues or you switch relationships somewhere along the way, if you have end up with another partner, um, I just feel like he's got a role to play in helping you heal around your relationship around men. Okay. So are you open to him stepping into that position? Sure. Yes. Okay. Is there part of you that's not? Um, I just have a lot of emotion coming up. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let that emotion, we're just going to create some space for that emotion to rise. It's perfectly, it's, it's welcome here. So just kind of pointing to how he was in life is not how he is in spirit. 
And when he looks at and reflects back on how he was with you in relationship in life as a human being, he, he, he definitely has, like, he's just pointing to his heart. It was a, it was heavy for him. It was a, he, he's just pointing like a heavy heart. It was hard for him to play that role and to be in relationship with you the way he was, but he didn't know any other way. And right. what I keep seeing is he was just pointing to that spark and that light within you that felt like such a contrast to the darkness and, and, and uh, pain that he was holding. And he had a really hard time being in relationship with you. Um, not because of who you are, but because of the light that you were standing in and holding. Okay. And now that he's passed and since he's passed, obviously that is no longer something that holds him back. So he feels like, I feel like he's like, let me, let me father you now. Like, let me, let me teach you now. Let me guide you now. Cause I know how to do that. I can, I can, I can be in relationship with you differently. Oh, well, that would be great. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to invite him to step behind you. So you may feel his presence. He's just placed his hand on your shoulder, left side. And he's quite proud. Like I just, he just like his chest just like lifted, his heart just expanded. He's just like, like this feeling of yes for him. Like there's a real purpose in him joining with you right now to support you. Wow. Okay. So keep let you're doing great. Just keep letting that energy rise up. You're doing great. Okay. I need some more. Okay. So let me see. <laughs> Okay, so going back to your relationship, in your heart of hearts, do you feel that this relationship has kind of run its course, is complete, maximized, or do you feel that there's some work to do still and that you're meant to be, to remain in the relationship? Do you have a sense of that? Uh, my sense is that I'm, I have more to do and I'm meant to be here still. Yeah. Yeah, I get that too. That's confirmation. Okay. Yeah. So the, yeah, ooh, goosebumps everywhere. So <laughs> the challenge is, and this is, I shared this, I think in the episode last week for me too, it's like, my husband was like, sometimes I feel like you want to be a solo act. I'm like, oh my God, that would be so much uh -huh. easier to not right. be in a relationship. Right. But that would be me running away. So I get that for you too. Right now, if you were to leave your relationship, that would be you running away and quitting okay. before the miracle. There's something really essential that the two of you are meant to teach each other and meant to learn together. And with your father in place now as your guardian angel, I feel like he's going to help you. Great. Okay. <clears throat> I feel, I mean, I feel that there's a purpose to a relationship too. Yeah. And I just feel, I've been feeling so stuck about how to get anywhere, but. Yeah. So there they'll just be open to the signs that'll come in. I feel like your father's going to kind of point you in different directions. So if, like there's a book or there's a podcast or something that keeps coming in and kind of ringing true for you, then be willing to follow that, follow those nudges, follow that, that insight that you're receiving from within less in the head, thinking about what to do and more in the heart feeling into what resonates and what direction you're meant to go. It's not going to be a logical process. There's going to be an interesting uh, path of unwinding, but it's not going to be a linear path from A to B to, to heal the marriage. It's going to be a, a, an interesting spiraling path. Huh. Okay. All right. I can do it. <laughs> yeah, you can do it. And, and the work together that you'll do is it, it will be so worth it. Trust me. It'll, it'll be challenging, but it'll be so worth it. I need you. Okay. Thank you. You're Thank you and so much. The piece in the back relates to these two things. So I feel like the, the back is going to shift. You can kind of see where it, where it lands in the next couple of days, let it unravel. So there's the, the spiritual and the energy unraveling right now, but the physical body may need some support. So you might find yourself doing some stretches or a hot bath with Epsom salt or even some yoga, something to support the body. Um, okay. Once you kind of get through the next one or two days of integration for the shifts we just made, then you can kind of tune in again and see where your body's leading you for support. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. 
well, this wasn't at all what I expected, but I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. It's uh, never what I expect either, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's see if we have another caller for the. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. What's your name? Hi, it's Lorna. Hi, Lorna. How can I help you? Well, um, a couple of years ago, I had a situation uh, with my um, family, uh, with my sisters, and um, then, sorry, I have to, <laughs> something came on here. Um, and then, that was two years ago, and then a year ago, I just, um, we this, we all got together, and I was uh, basically, it was like gaslighting, and I had to be very strong and deal with each one of them one-on-one. -on -one. Now, just a little bit of history is that I've been dealing with a lot, um, taking care of myself uh, for a lot of years, and um, they're just now dealing with their past issues, and... Although I, I felt that I dealt with it uh, quite well, um, but it's made um, our relationship, it's strained our relationships, and there hasn't been, um, I haven't had a relationship uh, with my sisters for the last two years. And although I've, I've forgiven them and I've forgiven myself, and I, my day-to-day, -day, you know, it goes on, you know, thinking I'm going along quite nicely, and then all of a sudden, like, this morning, it just something triggers, and um, it brings up these uh, past emotions. Okay, what are the and, what are the past emotions that you're feeling? Um, it's like it's a, it's a sadness. Yeah. It's, so can um, we just can we just be with the sadness for a minute? Can we just hold space for that and give it some space to rise up? Because the emotions are energy in motion, and right now it just needs. A witnessing in some space. So can we do that first? Yeah. It's okay to feel sad. It's That's loneliness. Hard. Like, yeah. yeah, it's like, um, there's a big part of me that this is not what I wanted. Um, mm -hmm. I miss them. Yeah. And it's, it's like how um, how to correct it. And even though over the years I've I've tried to correct it, and so in this to, moment, can I've we always... not correct it? Can we just not correct it for a moment? Because when we when you say correct it, it means that we're judging that it's wrong. And and right now, I I just want you to feel the loneliness and the sadness and the grief that's rising. Because these emotions need a space to be expressed and to be released. And I don't, I don't want you to judge these emotions. I don't want you to judge the situation just for this moment. Can we do that? Okay. Okay. So we're just going to invite some more of this energy to rise. Some of it's going down. Some of it's going to go down through the pelvis, down through your feet. And some of it's rising up through tears and through the top of your head. I'm just going to let that energy move. Some of it's kind of swirling around in your heart and being pulled down. So I'm just going to follow that path down. Are you okay if I do that? Yes. Okay. So let me just follow the heart down. I'm just feeling like that, that there's the energy of regret. And, the, and there is a sense of regret for how it's played out or regret for maybe not doing it differently or regret for not fixing it or trying to correct it or not knowing how to. So I just want, I'm just going to invite you to, are you willing to offer that over and just offer that over for healing? Yes, I am. Okay. Cause there's a part of you that's trying to figure it out. Um, and when you're not trying to figure it out, you're carrying this. And the challenge is, is that the ego is all intertwined in this and the fear is all intertwined in this and there's judgment all intertwined in this. So it becomes a big rat's nest. You're never going to be able to sort through it. 
So when you're willing to offer it over for healing, we can forgive it all. We can forgive the whole way it played out, the past, the, the emotions that are present now, based on what happened in the past. We can forgive it all into the divine hands of the universe, spirit, God, whatever it is that you feel resonant with. And when we do that, we, we are surrendering, saying, I don't know. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to heal this. And I don't even know what the purpose is, whether the relationship is meant to continue and evolve or whether relationship is meant to be let go of. And it's challenging with, with family relationships because a lot of times we judge it and think that these family relationships should be lifelong, but some family relationships maximize and then they're meant to actually be let go of. And that's really hard for us on a human level to understand, but sometimes that's what happens. And sometimes in relationship with family, when we evolve or shift or change, and, and let's say they don't, then it causes kind of a, a discord or a disconnect. And for us to try and stay connecting at that level, that lower vibrational level, it is actually holding ourselves back. And that's more painful, actually, than trying to fix the relationship. So just for the moment, I'm, I'm going to invite you just to, can you, can you just imagine yourself free, free from that relationship, those relationships for a moment. And in that freeing yourself, there you go. And in that freeing yourself, you're actually freeing them to just be and, and to live their life and, and to be in their life without needing to change anything about them, without needing to change anything about you. So giving yourselves all permission to be the beautiful expression of yourselves at this time without judgment. And just take a deep breath right into the center of your chest, right into your sternum, as deep as you can in there. We're just going to open up some space there. And just soften around that. We're going to let some more of that pain. Are you willing to let more of that pain go? Yes, I am. Okay, beautiful. So we're going to let that rise. And there's no more than everything that I'm giving you is just enough of an understanding at the level of the mind. Anything else will be brought to your heart to be understood, but just don't go grasping for any more understanding than I'm giving you. So letting go of the mind, no need to know anything more. Just let it rise. There we go. So how many sisters do you have? Five. Five. Okay. So when I'm tuning into your sister, there's one in particular that there's, there's meant to be some connection with. The others I feel are, are stepping, they're just stepping back further uh, away from you. Energetically, they're further away from you. So, but there's one that's, that's a little bit more forward. Is, is there someone that comes into your awareness when I say that? Is there one of them that? Yes. Okay. So my sense is she's the one that there's meant to be some form of connection or some form of uh, resolve around the relationship that one is purposeful right now. The other ones, I feel like just give them space, let them, let them be, let you let go of your grip and your attachment to them being different than they are. And some of them might actually just evolve and, and shift naturally and, and come back, you know, towards you. And, but they may not, I don't know. I'm not being shown that, but I'm definitely being shown, let go of your attachments to changing or fixing any of them any of the relationships and be open to that one, but not in your head, trying to figure it out in your heart, really letting your heart lead you to how, when, what that might look like. And really trusting your intuition around how to communicate and, and when. Okay. Okay. You're willing to do that? Yes, I am. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Just take one more deep breath with me here. And that energy is going to continue to move. I moved a lot of energy that was in the background there. So for the next 24 to 48 hours, you might feel a little wonky and, and there's a bit of a period of integration. 
You might even have some weird, wacky dreams. Some of that subconscious clearing happening in your dreams. Don't analyze your dreams. Don't, don't worry about them. Let them be. Uh, just know that there's still some, some shifts that are going to happen in the next couple of days. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. My pleasure. All right. So let's take a deep breath here. There's a lot of energy moving. So I, I love working with people because it actually moves everybody's energy who's listening as well. We're just going to let that energy move and clear. We're going to take a short break. When you come back, I'm going to take a couple more callers. The number to call in is one 390 8255 That's one 390 8255. That number is toll free in Canada and the US. And you can come into the queue, call right now and come into the queue. We're going to take a short break. And then when I come back, we'll continue with some more callers. We'll be right back. Heart-Led Living Intuition Academy with Sue DeMay is a unique, unschooling experience designed to unwind, clear, and align your intuitive channel. And the doors are open for you now. Experience unwavering faith and deep trust in your intuition as you strengthen your connection to source, allowing you to walk through every moment with more peace, confidence, clarity, and certainty. Experience this deep personal transformation with Sue's guidance including the option to share what you learn as a certified intuitive coach. This is your time to unwind and reprogram your mind, to rebuild your foundation and realign with your intuitive heart. Enrollment is now open. Apply today at heartledliving.com forward slash intuition academy. Again, that's heartledliving.com forward slash intuition academy. Welcome back. We are listening here on Contact Talk Radio. You're listening to Life by Divine, and I am your host, Sue Dumay. Today, I have been doing some intuitive readings and answering some questions and supporting people through any challenges they have going on in their life right now. So if you're feeling that you need some support, you can call in 1-844-390-8255. I can take one or two more, more callers. We have a little bit more time here to do some more readings. In the meantime, if you haven't already heard about the ego game of opposites coming up, I'm super excited about it. It is a life changer, game changer. We're basically reprogramming the subconscious mind and exposing one of the most clever ego hacks I've ever ever come across. And I've been studying the ego for more than a decade now. And this one was like a complete blind spot of my own and a complete blind spot for all my clients. So on those super stuck patterns and places where we just couldn't get people to move and, and we get to the root of things. And then I, I, they'd still be in that super stuck pattern. They'd kind of circle back around. I'm like, some, we're missing something. Something's missing. This is what we're missing. This clever ego hack basically embedding a virus in the subconscious mind to continue to feed the self-sabotage. So we'll be doing that on, on April 14th, this coming Sunday from 10 to 12 Pacific time. And if you sign up for my newsletter or come on to the heart, yes, movement group on Facebook, or even in on Instagram, find me on Instagram, you can stay in the loop in the way of the sign up for that. So it's a free masterclass for everybody coming up. So again, the call in is 1-844-390-8255. I'm just going to check in with, with my, with Cameron, see if there's anybody else in the queue. And if there's not, then 
Okay. So we'll go last call, last call to come in. 1-844-390-8255. When we look at these upsets in our life, when we look at these things that are kind of holding us back or keeping us stuck, or, or even if it's just a small little niggling in the mind, whether it's something that's happened in the past, it's a relationship that feels unresolved, or it feels like we're holding an upset or resentment, all upsets are actually blocking our ability to get messages and to follow our heart and to trust our intuition. So I always look at it, it doesn't matter how small the upset or how big the upset, all grievances, all upsets are meant to be looked at. So they become these signals to look inward. They become these signals to help us heal our leftovers. So when life bumps up against our leftovers, we will feel some form of resistance. We will feel some form of niggling or upset. Something will will impact us in a way. And it's in those moments where if we get the proper support or if we kind of create the, the, the sacred space for ourselves, then we're able to actually heal it and get to the root of it and get in underneath it. One of my favorite quotes from A Course in Miracles is, we are never upset for the reason we think. And I say that a lot. I'm never upset for the reason I think. Because in the mind, when something comes in and we get upset about something, it's easy for the ego to take us down into a wormhole and bring us into this fear and worry and regret and shame and embarrassment or whatever else it has up its sleeve. Whatever point of weakness it can find, it will find it. And the ego, the ego mind is a, is a clever shapeshifter. It's tricksy. It's not, we can't always see it, but there is a way to start to be able to discern and feel the subtle shift that happens when you shift from being in alignment with spirit as your teacher, which is the teacher of love to being in alignment with ego as your teacher, which is the teacher of fear. The challenge with ego is that it evolves. And I've talked about the stages of the evolution of the ego from my book. The ego evolves and is very tricksy and clever in the way that it changes to adapt. It will actually even tune into becoming a cheerleader. It can hijack your spirituality. It can become a spiritual ego and where it actually sounds like the language of love. It sounds like cheerleading. It sounds like encouragement but really it's fear. It's still based in fear. So when we start to tune into the subtle energy or the subtleness behind the, the words behind the experiences, and you start to really practice that divine discernment, then you'll be able to identify that shift from spirit as your teacher to ego as your teacher. And in the beginning, it's going to be a lot. It's usually ego heavy. It's on the side of being ego heavy as your teacher. And as I help people unwind their ego and become more aware of it, and because of my gift, I'm able to actually feel into the subtleness of it. So for instance, on the weekend, I was joining with one of my students in the Intuition Academy, and she had something she was wanting to discern around and and she was feeling a yes toward it. And I'm like, no, something feels off. And it feels like there's the small niggling, but something feels off. So we were able to actually look and get in underneath it and clear a whole big piece. And it wasn't about the decision at all. And once it cleared, then she still felt a yes toward the, the training that she was tuning into. But I kept feeling a no. So we actually ended up discerning that her ego had hijacked her, her yes, the ego had hijacked that artificial kind of created this artificial feel good, this artificial heart. Yes. Whereas the true guidance was no. So in the beginning you can practice the discernment and, and, and it can be easy on certain things, but anything that you're attached to the answer, anything that you're afraid of what the answer might be, or if you really have an agenda in your mind and you want the answer to be a certain thing, 
then it blocks our, our ability to actually really tune in and, and let our heart lead us to let the spirit within us guide us. And that's living life by divine. Life by design, a lot of people can tune into this place. And, and what I'm seeing more and more is people getting hijacked in this life by design stage. And the ego loves to work with people that are awake and use their awakeness, use their enlightened consciousness to actually keep them stuck and keep them running on a hamster wheel. So it's been interesting to, to be witnessing the, the shifts that happen at such profound levels. And especially now that we have the new ego game of opposites tool that's come in, that has really shifted a lot of people in, in set, like literally instantly changing the programming. It's like deleting the virus and installing a new program and your computer's clean in the mind. It's really wild. And, uh, and even with myself working through my own ego game of opposites and exposing those definitions in my own mind over and over again, I'm, I'm finding that it's an instant change. It's an instant shift for healing the mind. It's really powerful. So taking a moment to, let's take a deep breath. Let's just, I don't, I don't believe there's any more callers right now. So I'm going to take a moment to just tune in and see and work with some of your energies. So just being open, wide open to receive right now. We're going to bring that energy from the mother earth. That energy is going to rise up. And it's going to rise up through your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and energy body all five bodies. So it's cleansing, clearing, and purifying, kind of flushing up and out. And then we're going to bring that divinity vortex in. That's a more of a spiraling energy. So sometimes it makes people feel a little bit dizzy or a little off. Just ask it to back off if it's too much. It's common to feel that. We're just going to invite that energy to come down and swoop and cleanse and clear. It's a purifying kind of scrubbing energy. Again, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and energetically. Anything that's not serving you, anything that has nothing to teach you anymore, any leftovers. And particularly, we're going to invite anything that's not yours that you're carrying to be removed and cleared outside of your energy field. So I'm going to bring it into an uh, energy vortex that I work with within my community, I'm going to pull that energy from your field and bring that in there. And you can even place it there purposefully, setting the intention to release anything that's not yours that you don't need to physically, personally process. So a lot of times what we do, especially light leaders, we'll take on things that are other people's and we're trying to process it for them. We can't do that. We need to clear it. In, the, in a different way. It's, it's not actually meant to be cleared through our same personal process of healing. It's processed a little differently. And when we recognize this process a little differently, we can actually clear it quite easily. Whereas when we're trying to clear it through our normal channels where we do our own healing, then it gets kind of gummed up and stuck in, in the field. And it actually causes more blocks and, and harm to us individually. So it's not actually serving humanity it's not serving the whole or other people if we are actually our own channel is actually mucked up and and full of gunk that's not ours especially when it's not ours so inviting that energy to rise and clear and move out of your field and clear and then i'm going to bring down you're going to feel possibly a an outer force of energy as i come down with that god consciousness energy that vibration that high frequency vibration bringing it in physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and energetically. And I'm going to invite that to cross all timelines. I'm going to invite that to cross all the geographical boundaries. I'm going to invite that to move through all of your past lives as well. So anything that's not serving that has nothing to teach you, we're going to clear that easily. If there's something it has to teach you, we're going to invite that to be brought to your heart to be understood and then easily released. And we're inviting some more of that energy to rise and clear. Beautiful. Keep breathing. Keep receiving. Saying yes to receive the healing. There's just some energy cords that are not serving. So I'm going to invite those to clear if you're willing to have that 
happen for you. Just say yes and it will happen. And we're going to ground your energy in this new experience, this new vibration. Just feeling a connection between your feet or your body and the surface that you're in contact with. Imagine a magnetic force from Mother Earth, opposite force for the magnetic force you feel within your body. So those two magnets are drawn toward each other. Feeling that beautiful connection. Beautiful, bringing in the earth energy, bringing in the water energy, the air and the fire. There we go. Just breathe. Breathe and receive. Breathe and say yes. And just letting that continue to integrate. Again, if there's anything you need to know, it'll be brought to your heart to be understood. The rest can just go. A lot of times right now, there's a big clearing that's happening. Most of it you don't need to know about. And then the stuff that you do need to know about will linger and remain. And sometimes you may need support in moving through that or shifting that or seeing that. Other times it just needs a little bit more time little bit more of your witnessing and, and your attention to to clear it for yourself so just know that the healing process is happening for everybody whether they realize it or not this old collective dense energy that's been kind of carrying us and, and holding us back for a long time is clearing the energy of the earth and globally it's all facilitating and supporting that and you just need to keep saying yes to it otherwise if you resist it, it becomes really painful and it creates a lot of suffering and pain and a lot more, like kind of like being dragged. <laughs> We're all being called. It's a non-negotiable call now. So we all need to answer the call. We all need to say yes. And those that aren't saying yes or those that are resisting are being dragged along. And that becomes a lot more painful. So taking a couple more deep breaths here. And an invitation if there is... A resonance with what I'm doing, the work I'm doing, and you want to have more access to me in, in, in a call like this in the way of calling in and bringing in pieces and asking for support on a weekly basis. This is exactly what we do in the expansion level of our membership. And you have access to me every week, every Tuesday after the, the radio show, actually, every Tuesday, and then the other coaches and healers that I've worked with and mentored and trained every Thursday. So you have at least two calls each week, live support every week to help sustain the shifts and to continue the healing and to give you the pieces that you need to see each week. I know when I was doing this work on my own, it was very isolating. It was very confusing. We're not meant to heal on our own. Yes, we can do that, but we're really meant to be healing in community. So finding those communities that really resonate with you that that support you on a level that you're meant to be supported at at that time is essential right now and that's where we can really have the biggest shifts in the shortest amount of time so if you're interested and you're curious about our community you can check out heartledliving.com forward slash become a member and you can explore the idea of becoming a expansion level member to receive that ongoing live support with me every week and with the other coaches and healers that I've trained. So as you take a moment, just place your hand on your heart and just, just pause for a moment and just say yes. You say yes to the divine within you. Say yes to your heart leading you. Say yes to the beautiful light that's within you, that's always within you, this beautiful pilot light that never goes out. Just say yes to allowing it to expand and to be present, be with anything and all that is accept this moment and all that it holds being open and curious about the gifts that it holds for you imagine you can unwrap each present moment with great anticipation for the miracles the potential the love the light that it holds for you i want to thank you for tuning in today and and every week and i'm just i'm really honored to be here with you. I appreciate you. I see you. I see the miracle that you are. And I thank you for showing up each week with me. Until next week, namaste.
You've been listening to Life by Divine with your host, Sue DeMay. Shift your consciousness from head to heart and enliven your soul as you discover how to lead with your heart and live your own life by divine. Join Sue in the growing global heart-led living community at heartledliving.com. That is heartledliving.com. 